Thank you. I'm really happy to be here, and uh, I am from the Department of Art on campus, and we're all about passion, we're all about ideas, uh, expression, and we like to make things, and often you see the things that we make around on campus, especially the, the public art pieces. Um, so I'm going to talk about something that's particularly close to me, which is that uh, sometimes I get bored by public art. Uh, and often the type of art that I get bored with has its heritage in, in pieces like this uh, that are worthy, but they're kind of monuments. There's no doubt about their power. There's no doubt that they stand for some kind of truth. There's no complexity. Uh, and not particularly huggable, except this one, this person got a, got a hug in, which is nice. <laughs> Um, but this is the, maybe the more abstract version of, of the former pieces. A little bit more contemporary are pieces like this that offer some kind of perceptual pleasure, uh, certainly in, in are more inviting, of, if not exactly interaction, some a little bit more uh, intimacy in a funny way with our bodily functions, like especially that are um, uh, about our per perception. And this is a great example of this piece by Christian Muller of contemporary public commission art. Uh, I've seen this piece. Maybe some of you have too. It's at the San Jose airport. Has anybody seen this? What, do you, what did you think? Oh, it's pretty beautiful. It is beautiful. Well, now I'm going to talk bad about it. I think the hands are in distress. Like, they're upheld by the hands. They're in distress. I don't know. You get a little something? That's nice. Uh, he would be glad to hear that. He's a really interesting artist and makes lots of different kinds of things. And um, I think this is one of the, the more lovely, sort of big budget public art commission pieces that, that I've seen, and both in person and in documentation, and that, that's why I wanted to choose it. But it is also really e emblematic of uh, motif and subject matter. There's a, a very large dependence and use of humans in particular but uh, hands, faces, um, but very little complexity. And the kind of nuance that you mentioned about the, maybe the hands being in distress, maybe they're not just tickling the sky, I do think that that's present here. <laughs> so that's, that's to his credit. But largely when you encounter public art, there's still this kind of heritage of, even today, of this kind of, this is power, here I am, and look at me. Uh, but there's lots of other types of public art, and I'm going to talk about some more ephemeral, some more temporary, uh, certainly more idiosyncratic work. Um, I like to think of contemporary art public, <laughs> public practices as being situated either on or in between these um, kinds of inflatables. I love to use these as examples. There's the commercial, there's the overtly political, uh, the whimsical, who are dancing for you now, um, the um, kind of social practice examples of, of wanting to do good and, and how, can we better, uh, how can we better construct our, our society. And then there's the experiential, like the luminarium that was here recently on campus. All the polar bears are done. Um, so I'm going to start off with, um, with some examples that are fairly contemporary. Most of them are anyway. This piece from the 90s is a little older. Uh, a lot of the work that I'm going to show you is a kind of an elaboration on graffiti, essentially. Uh, it's publicly executed, uncommissioned. I do have some commissioned pieces in here as well. And these two examples are pretty um, great because they're both painting directly on street surfaces. Uh, they're illegal. Uh, they're widely loved. And one, of one obviously is very representational and the other uh, abstract. And it's interesting that when New York went through its uh, multiple stages of graffiti, um, I forget their term for it, but cleaning it up, um, they left these alone. I mean, these ovals appeared all over Manhattan and, and sti are still there. This is a, a little bit more consistent with some of the work that you would see nowadays. Uh, Swoon is a young, very ambitious artist, very short, oddly short. Um, kind of one of the hardest working young artists around. She makes these very elaborate cutout pieces. Also, she does some large format uh, block printing. And then she wheat pastes them right on the street. She's been widely embraced also by the art establishment. She's had shows at MoCA, MoMA, excuse me, lots of other places. Uh, and she's also an engine behind this um, floating um, community that uh, goes up waterways and does workshops and uh, events, and it's this in incredibly 
uh, crazy proposition. That's really wonderful. And then there's a lot of art like this, especially in Europe, that, you know, it's not really graffiti, it's not really, um, you don't really understand why it's there. It's kind of mysteriously appears in your pathway as part of your everyday comings and goings. And I think this is kind of wonderful. It's not saying, here I am, look at me. It's kind of like saying, oops, you saw me. You know, investigate a little closer. <laughs> Sometimes the work speaks directly to you. Uh, maybe, th maybe there are surrogates for somebody sitting on your shoulder. Uh, perhaps these kinds of sentiments uh, encourage you to look at somebody next to you or somebody you might be walking behind. Um, they're incredibly humble, uh, there's, they're incredibly sweet, uh, and they don't last long. A lot of contemporary public art, especially the kind that I'm showing, um, looks to our immediate environment and our, uh, the way that we move in our environment and space and looks to make some changes that's either pointing towards a heightened awareness of movement or of kind of ownership of public space. Uh, sometimes it's very whimsical and sometimes it's uh, more instructional or um, dangerous. The, um, the bench is actually, is a, all of these of course have long stories. The bench is actually was a sanctioned pro project. Uh, the artist got, got permission from the city and it was much more elaborate than, than what you see. Um, I, I look forward to seeing something like this on our bike paths here. A lot of projects, a lot of public art projects uh, invite either tacitly or directly participation. And this is uh, one <coughs> moment in a very large project uh, by an anonymous person who calls himself a collaborative, but it's one guy. And it's, um, they're called, he's called, You Are Beautiful. And what he simply does, it's incredibly simple, is he, uh, makes those words happen in lots of different ways and in lots of different spaces. Almost always public, almost always unsanctioned, but he has also had some, um, you know, paid for sanctioned projects. I really like this one because uh, he used a chain link fence and he used cups or something like that, um, which was an open invitation for interruption. I mean, come on. And so you got all kinds of different words and um, things happening with the cups. Sadly, somebody was disappointed. And some projects not only invite participation, but actually need participation in order to function. So these textual healing folks, which I'm confident is a play on, on the Marvin Gaye song, um, <laughs> make works that are projected um, live outside and that take content that's texted to them um, by anybody um, in order to f kind of fill in the blanks or fill in the speech bubbles. And sometimes it's pretty um, dumb, but you know, other times it's not. That's what you get. A lot of artists like to play with uh, perception, uh, like to sort of catch us off guard a little bit, again, as we're uh, moving around in our daily activities. So this artist in, in this body of work uh, essentially took a photograph of what was there except for the sign, and then made a montage of that scene and the sign and then put it back on the sign. So, not legal, but um, I wish I would have seen it. Does that make sense about how that works? Okay. Uh, and this is kind of similar in, in the way that it takes an existing um, either ritual or setup or convention and then alters it just a little bit to uh, kind of catch us uh, in our expectations and our assumptions. And some folks just like to make trouble. Uh, so this is the, uh, an example of the Cut Up Collective in, in England, and uh, you can't see them online. They took all their stuff down, uh, probably because they didn't want to get in trouble. But they literally take peel billboards off, cut them up, and put them back. <laughs> so, and sometimes it's, it's kind of more directly political, but oftentimes it's, it's not, and this would be one of those. Um, a lot of artists, uh, not too dissim dissimilar from the earlier uh, examples, essentially mark a place in order to heighten awareness uh, of your, your passage through uh, a site or a city. And so uh, the Pansy Project is an ongoing project that plants pansies 
at sites of homophobic violence. Um, the blue building by Hoffman, that was a building that was going to be torn down. It's, you know, it's the blue building is odd because it seems so ordinary. And then it's kind of like, whoa, it's not. Um, Eliason does this project in rivers all over the world where he introduces a pigment that's strangely red, and then when it interacts with the water, it turns green, and it's completely non-polluting, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and he's done some of these guerrilla style. He's a very famous artist, like sort of like the Andy Warhol, uh, kind of famous of our, of our time. But um, people love this project so much that museums now all over the world invite him to um, color their riv rivers as well. And then the graffiti research lab folks um, are responsible for developing a, a kind of non-invasive light-based graffiti, which some of you may be already familiar with. Um, this is uh, too much to talk about, but it's my way of, of introducing this idea of social practice or relational practice. And these are types of art projects that are situated on a very broad spectrum of uh, community activism, uh, performance, um, idiosyncratic kinds of things that are just about interpersonal relations. It's very, very broad and kind of difficult to describe in any um, simple way. I have a few more examples that are uh, more concrete. Uh, the Center for Urban Pedagogy um, is sort of, along with the future farmers, who are also very good designers, um, kind of are on more on the, s the end of community activism. And the fallen fruit are a little bit more eccentric, but also community-minded. And one thing about the, this particular piece by the uh, future farmers is that, <coughs> excuse me, is that this is a, um, a recent project where they set up a kitchen where you could come and get soup and you could come and get your dirt tested to see about the, what you could grow um, and what the um, toxic, toxic, toxicity levels were. Uh, in other words, to know more about your backyard. So that's really great. It's not that artful to me. I, I'd rather see soup stuff um, like this. <laughs> Although we're not going to hear it, so that kind of takes, takes it all away. <laughs> so what I miss in some of the more hardcore, um, not so aesthetically inclined relational projects is wit and humor, complexity, and really problematizing the things we already know, like the soup Nazi. <laughs> All right, thank you for that. This might be beneficial not to have the audio on this one. Um, distribution in public, along public pathways is also part of public art. There's uh, a really nice history of that that kind of goes back to mail art uh, in the early part of the 20th century or the mid 20th century. Um, this is a little bit more contemporary version and actually, Michael, uh, Michelle Gondry's film, Be Kind Rewind, which didn't get a lot of good press, was based on uh, this woman's work. And he does acknowledge that in that film in Tiny, Tiny Type. Basically, she replays, acts out popular films, burns a DVD, and in this, <laughs> and in this series of films that she did, and you see the E.T. one here, it's very funny. Um, her local DVD store allowed her to include her version along with the studio version. So when you would go there and rent E.T., you would get both. <laughs> so that's pretty great. And it is funny, and she has a very good website, so you check her out. <laughs> so I'm going to go a little bit, uh, if it's even possible, a little bit more quickly than I have been. I don't know how I'm doing on time. Um, uh, so I have some commissioned and uncommissioned projects. This is in Pittsburgh. It's still up. It's had many iterations. Basically, we swap out images. I design new pieces. I did a version also with Carnegie Mellon students out there. Um, the first phase uh, consisted of, uh, in these light boxes, of animal irises. Then I worked with some veterinarians, ophthalmology veterinarians at UC Davis, uh, to develop these images, and we, we uh, did the retina images, the fundus images of animals. Uh, this is in Los Angeles, and this was an architect commission um, mural, all done with digital tools um, on the face of her very odd and ugly building. Um, purposely ugly, I mean, she likes it that way. Um, and so my project was to 
essentially to elaborate on the building habits and modes of other types of creatures besides humans, so insects, animals, plants, etc. And there's a subtext here about the different forms of carbon. And this is when we were done. We were so happy. Um, this is a, 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 I have a couple of really eccentric projects. Um, I'm from Los Angeles, moved up here about five years ago. Um, there used to be this homeless encampment called Dome Village, 20, 20 foot um, geodesic domes designed by a student of Buckminster Fuller. Very economical, people lived there for free. It was a real community, it was real cutting edge. They rented, rented the property from LA for a dollar. LA sent, uh, sold it to Arco, they got to stay for a while, then they kicked them out and did nothing. Um, so I used to drive past it all the time and think, wow, this is incredibly cool. And then I drove past it one day and it was gone and I started looking further into it. And I was having a cranky about housing moment and so I uh, did this. Um, so I essentially created my own dome village type of village out of coconuts and this coincided with a large ex uh, s exhibition in New York that I was doing with an affiliated body of work. And so basically I made a sign, a kind of you can live here now sign. This is how, you know, this is how big your condo could be, this is how much it's gonna cost. Um, except it's, you know, they're coconuts and um, there's a nod to Paulo Solari, the utopian architect based in Arizona. Uh, there's a clown and a, a, a deity called Jizo and they have both have toy houses and coconuts. Um, anyway, so I, 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 I have a background in street art and so I went and I put up my sign on the fence of where Dome Village used to be and I've got lots of tasty stories of talking to people inside that were still sleeping in there and um, anyway, they were up in other cities too and the other component was I made um, a little village of, of cast, um, pl plaster cast coconut domes and put it on that, um, put it on some of the pads that were left, right? So that was fun. Um, this it was right here uh, at UCSB on the back side of the museum and the art museum and the building, as some of you might know, is undergoing some architectural retrofitting, so the space doesn't look exactly like this anymore. But uh, I like to work with, uh, with people that I work with, so I work with students all the time. And this, was, this piece was actually a true collaboration on every level, which is rare. The collaboration, we talk about collaboration all the time, often it doesn't mean real collaboration. And this project was a real collaboration uh, and we were really happy to do it. Um, not a collaboration, but nonetheless, I invited 16 students and faculty and staff from three different colleges on campus um, after parking services first got their first sign. And, the, and I asked them if, I, if we could use it, and they said yes. So that was great, and we did this. It was up for a week or two. It looked great at night, very sexy. <laughs> um, then they got two signs, and I wanted to do it again, and they said no. <laughs> um, likewise, with um, I invited some students, grad students, and a couple faculty, and uh, we kind of took over uh, the, you might have seen this sign next to the 101 on your commute to LA my old commute, um, that was great fun also. This is a graffiti research lab uh, project in Rotterdam. They were invited, it's a Renzo piano building that's faced with LEDs, it's about 200 feet tall. And this is the quirkiest of the quirk. Um, this is where I, I try to get people, six people who live next to each other to change their porch lights to make a spectrum. Nobody, I've ha yet to have a full spectrum. <laughs> and also I have lots of great stories about that, but uh, I got a little, <laughs> a little, some more recent work, uh, billboards, image sequences, this one's about kind of elliptical relationship between the viewer and the, and the space of the billboard, the advertising space. Uh, this one's about the sort of prominent parties in, in the news that, that sort of constitute the content of the news. It's actually all me, because it is all about me. <laughs> Just kidding. One coming up um, soon in Oregon. This is uh, about as political as I get, but it's really meant to complicate um, our 
our glib use of the terminology. How many of you know who Agent 99 is? A couple, you know, you guys got this. Uh, last spring at the Wheelhouse, the bike place in Santa Barbara, do you know? If they've got great windows. I worked with a former student. We put on a one-night extravaganza. Uh, lots of work, great fun. Uh, really, um, really glad I did that. And then, I'm sorry the sound is not here. It's a little sound. So uh, last summer, uh, kind of in the middle of the summer, uh, I worked with the people who own the video displays in gas stations in Santa Barbara. Um, only time this has happened in the country, and it hasn't happened since, where artist programming is on these otherwise intrusive displays. Um, and so that was also involved uh, lots of invited uh, UCSB students, mostly grad students and faculty, and some honor students. And then I'll end with the other video that I uh, that I did for that project, which brings us full circle vis-a-vis -vis monuments um, and public uh, statues, we'll just say. Thanks a lot. <laughs>